All right, so in this video, I'm gonna give you the 10 steps to start a chocolate business online. That's right, if you make chocolate, decadent truffles or anything with chocolate, I'm gonna give you the 10 steps to get your business up and running online and we're gonna get to it right now. All right, so let's get started. I am Damien and this is Marketing Food Online. If this is your first video, welcome to my channel. I am a food entrepreneur for over a decade now and operate six online food businesses. I sell on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and our own shop, as well as multiple sites with marketing food and YouTube channels. So if you want to get up and running and you have a chocolate business, but you're not really sure how to get started with it online and create an e-commerce business, which I highly recommend you do because retail stores are closing like crazy. E-commerce is the way in the future for food businesses. Even chocolate, desserts, treats, candies, anything related to food, that is the way to go. So let's dive into it really quick. We are going to start with number one, the first step. And of course, these are my recommendations for you out of my own experience. These are the steps you should take. Now, many states do have states, cities, and counties do have special permits and licensing and such that they do want you to follow. And they're slightly different by state. But these 10 steps were, will be able to be used any state that you're in, anywhere that you are, and get your e-commerce chocolate business up and running. So number one, decide what to make. Now, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of odd and weird. No, listen, a lot of people get confused about what they want to make because they can make a hundred different things. I wouldn't recommend you start a business with a hundred different things, but if you've got that many, maybe you want to introduce about 10 or 12 or a dozen, just about a dozen to start with, but decide what it is you can make and how you're able to make it. Okay. Make sure you've got that written down and you've got a specific, almost like a menu set up of what it is that you're really good at making and what you want to sell online. Okay. Now, step two. You need to incorporate. Do not, I recommend you do not use this food business as a hobby. You need to protect yourself legally. People can get sick and have allergic reactions. Many of the clients that I do, I also offer one hour consulting calls. Many clients that I have say that they started a food business as a hobby. That's great. But when you get online and you begin to create and treat it as a business, you need to treat it as a business. Okay. It's no longer a hobby. You need to protect yourself. You need to incorporate and you can do that either as an LLC, an S Corp or a C Corp. That's totally your decision. And to make it really easy, by the way, down in the description, I'll have three different links. These are online uh, uh, websites that will allow you to incorporate literally from home in a matter of about 10 to 15 minutes. Super simple. That's actually how we incorporated ourselves over a decade ago. But check those out. Check those links out. Educate yourself on what type of entity status LLC, C Corp or S Corp is going to be best for you. Number three, you need food business insurance. Now you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to cost a fortune. No, it's not. Um, and you can get an insurance policy between five to $600 for a year, the entire year. And that's about 40 bucks a month. Okay. So definitely get food business insurance, not just incorporate, but you want to make sure you're insured. That way anything happens, all of your personal belongings and your personal assets, they will not have any bearing at all when you have that. Okay. They can only go after a company and not your personal liability. Okay. So get yourself some food business insurance. Now, number four, this is the one that I kind of opened with. You want to make sure that you have all your state, city, and county license and permits you need. Now, how do you go about finding all, all of that out? No problem. Go to Google, type in your state, and you want to type in business license, food business license, and the name of your state, and then the county and city. Uh, let's say you're in Los Angeles. So you want to type in Los Angeles food business permits, food business licensing. Okay. So once you do that, websites will pop up. You'll get those specific state and county and city licenses and permits so you make sure you're legal, okay? Like I mentioned, make sure you protect yourself above and beyond anything. That's my biggest thing I tell my clients. Number five. So the next thing you want is a car insurance policy, okay? And now here's what I mean. When you begin to use your policy, uh, your, I'm sorry, use your car to drive it around for business purposes. If you're getting ingredients, packaging, boxes, or dropping off stuff, you want to make sure you get insurance, specifically a commercial auto insurance that is going to protect your vehicle while you're using it for your business. Okay. 
<clears throat> Number six, the space. Where are you going to fill your orders? Now you're going to be getting orders online. So you want to make sure that you have space set up dedicated specifically to fulfill the orders. Okay. Some people don't think about that, but make sure you've got almost like a shipping station, a shipping area where you want to box your product, your chocolates, and you want to get them boxed up and shipped out the door. Okay. You don't need a lot of space, but you need access to the internet so you can print your labels and such. And then you want to make sure you have a space for shipping. Number seven. Not only do you open up your own website, which by the way, you can do yourself, Weebly.com and, and Shopify.com has simplified the process. You can literally have a shop and e-commerce business up and running in less than 48 hours. I kid you not. And you don't need to be a computer genius to do this. They have a lot of fantastic, easy drag and drop processes where you can literally bring a photo of your product, put a price point, a description, and you're all set. It is pretty simplistic. Now it does take a little bit of time, um, but literally I would say with a matter of a couple of days worth of work, you could easily have one up and running. Now to make it easier down in the description, again, you'll check out that Weebly and Shopify. Those are the two website designer platforms you want to check out. You can click on those links and you can learn a little bit more about how they do it. And we also have videos here on our YouTube channel about that as well. Okay. Now when you want to sell online, not only do you want your own website, I highly recommend you start with eBay and Etsy. Now, the reason why you start on eBay and Etsy and open a store with the two of them is that you're going to get exposure to a lot of customers that are already built into their platform. They've got millions and millions of customers already on their platforms. And that, along with your own website, is a great way to start right off the bat. Now, um, number eight, social media. You need to make sure that you've got a presence on all the platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and anyone else in between. You need to have all of those platforms with a presence for your chocolate business. Okay. <clears throat> Number nine. Now this one is kind of interesting because you need to learn how to ship your chocolate. Okay. Even in summer, I actually have a ton of chocolate products that we ship during summer and spring. You need to use ice packs to ship any of your chocolate products. But I recommend what you, what we did is you need to experiment. You need to ship the product to yourself. Yes. Take your product. Once you've got your packaging, you want to put that in a, in a box. You want to pack it up with some ice packs, ship it to yourself so you can see what works best for your particular type of chocolate. Okay. Number 10, make sure you have a great packaging and logo and all of the label requirements set up by the FDA in regards to your ingredients, nutritional analysis, um, if you need a barcode for any retail stores, you also want to make sure you do that as well. But if you're shipping them online and you're the one making the product, you don't really necessarily need a barcode. It's not required. Okay. It's really just for retail stores, but make sure you've got your ingredients. You've got a catchy leg, um, label with a cool logo. That's going to be your branding. And then you want to make sure you abide by all the FDA guidelines as far as the net weight contents and nutritional analysis. Okay. So these are the 10 basic steps to get you up and running. It'll be a great foundation to get run. I'm sure you've got a million other questions. Definitely let me know down below and I'll hop on those questions and answer them as soon as I can. But those 10 steps will definitely get you in the right direction. And as always, uh, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and check out our other videos. We've got over 700. Thanks for watching Marketing Food Online. And if you are looking to create your own food truck, start a home-based food business under the cottage food law, franchise a food operation, start a packaged food business, private label your own food product, sell on Amazon, get your own online store or sell food online. Remember to subscribe and check out these videos for more resources. Take care.